Hi, I'm JB from Huffy, and today I'm going to be helping you put together your 26-inch Huffy Escalate bicycle. To start, we're going to go to the rear of the bike, and we're going to remove the screws for the rear derailleur guard. You'll find the rear derailleur guard inside the box of parts that come with your bike, and it looks like this right here. We're going to go ahead and put it into place. And insert the screws. I hand it first. And then you can use the included tools to tighten them up. The Phillips head portion of the Allen wrenches that were provided will work. You want to get those good and snug so that they are ready to go. After that, we're going to move to the pedals. I'm going to take this wheel off the table here, set it off to the side. The pedals are a tricky part for a lot of bikes as they do not follow the traditional rules of lefty loosey, righty tighty to the fullest. The left pedal is marked with an L. It also has an L stamped onto the metal part of the pedal there. And it goes on the left side of the bike. The left side of the bike is marked with an L on the crank um, so that you can easily identify it. The right side is marked with an R, has an R on the crank. And just so you're aware, the right side of the bike is always the rider's right and has the drivetrain on that side. The right side pedal uses righty tighty as the rule. The left side pedal uses lefty tidy as the rule. It's the only part on this bike that we're going to have to worry about for this, um, but just so you know, lefty tidy for the left side. So let's go ahead and put the pedals on. We're going to start doing this by hand so that we do not strip out the cranks or damage the pedal. And we'll put it on as far as we can by hand um, before using a 15 millimeter wrench or the provided tool that comes in the box. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tighten. And you want to hold the bike in place and make sure that the pedal is good and tight. Don't want it to come loose while you're riding. Now for the other side on the left, remember it's lefty tidy, so we're going to rotate to the left to tighten. And if it feels like it's not going in or you're not doing something right, stop, take it back apart, and try again. Once again, I'm going to use the provided tool to tighten up the left side. All right, so we got the pedals tight. They're good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the seat post to the seat. Keeping the bike level on the table there so that it doesn't go anywhere. Just a quick note, if you are working on your table at home, um, you may want to leave the fork plastic piece in from shipping so that it doesn't mar up your table. Um, or you can use a piece of cardboard or a towel if need be, uh, but just a quick heads up for that. So we're going to go ahead and take the small end of the seat post and insert it into the seat post or seat uh, binder. And we're just going to uh, rotate it up so that you get it to a position that is uh, seemingly comfortable to start with for your adjustment process. You can open the lever on the seat tube 
and kind of insert it just to get yourself kind of a, an orientation. A good place to start is typically having the seat uh, parallel with the surface that you're working on or the ground. So we'll go ahead and pull that back out. Then we'll use a 15 millimeter wrench or the provided tool to tighten that in. You do want to have uh, equal amount of tightness on both sides of the seat. So just make sure that if you see uh, a little bit of the bolt hanging out on this side, that you tighten this side a little bit more to try to match it up. If you get your reflector a little off center, that's fine. You can always loosen this up with the Phillips head screwdriver and adjust it as necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this side here. At the same time I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the seat post is all the way down and hitting the stop um, so that it doesn't have any wiggle room and it's going to be all the way tight when I finish. All right, so got that snugged up. You're going to go ahead and put it in the seat tube on the bike. Um, once again, just loosen up the quick release slide it into where you believe you should start. You can use this as kind of a resting spot if the reflector's on there. Line it up with the frame of the bike so that it is straightforward. And then you can use this to tighten and check. So this is still a little loose here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this back up and tighten the thumb screw on the back side until you can't tighten it anymore by hand. And we're going to go ahead and close again. And it should be a little bit more difficult this time. Uh, you do want this to have good tension on it. So if it's difficult to close, that's fine. But if it's impossible to close, you can open it back up, turn back the thumb screw a little bit, and try again. All right, so that is the seat. And now we're going to go ahead and move to the front of the bike and put the handlebars on. So the handlebars were zip tied to the frame and the box and now that you've gotten them out, it may take a little bit of untangling and a little bit of orientation to get them where you need them. And this is typically where I start at when I'm putting this bike together. I kind of flip it up so that the wires are on the bottom side of the handlebars and then I have it to where I can rotate it and it would come in like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the plastic guard line up the stem wedge and put everything in place. Now you're going to notice some marks on the stem. You'll see some vertical marks going all the way around the stem. You may have noticed them as well on the seat post. Those are your minimum marks. So this stem needs to be in at least that far in the front and the seat post needs to be in at least that far to be safe uh, for riding. So we're going to go ahead and just wiggle that into place. And you can move this up and down as needed for adjustment. So I'm going to start right there. We're going to use the larger of the Allen wrenches provided. And we'll just tighten it into place temporarily until we can align it with the front wheel when that's attached. You're going to notice that your handlebar is going to be in a weird orientation where your levers are forward, um, your shifters are a little tall, your reflector is going to be loose. Uh, and that's fine for this portion of it. That's going to be adjusted as we move further. So don't really worry about that just at the moment. You can also release the quick release for your front brake at this time because we're going to be putting the front tire on. So you're going to need that separated. Just hold on to the one side of the brake and pull them apart. so that the front tire has plenty of space to go in there. All right, so now we're going to add the front tire. So you can go ahead and remove the plastic piece from the fork. I'm just going to kind of tap it out. Set the bike down there. Get the front tire ready. I'm going to go ahead. I've already pre-loosened these, but you'll loosen the 15 millimeter nuts on the axles and you'll pull the dropout washers so that they're to the furthest out position against those nuts as well. 
As far as tread orientation when you're putting this on, you want to match the tread so it looks like the orientation in the rear of the bike. So in this case, I'm going to be putting this tire on this way. So we'll get through the brake. And we will get the tire in place. We're going to go ahead and rotate the dropout washer so that it locks into the hole that's in the fork. And then rotate and tighten the 15 millimeter by hand on that side. We're going to do the same thing on the left side of the bike. Going to give everything just a little bit of a shake and wiggle just to make sure that it's all the way in the dropouts. You want to make sure that the wheel and tire combo is in the middle of the fork as much as possible. And then you can take the 15 millimeter wrench that you might have, adjustable wrench you might have, or the provided wrench that we give to you, and tighten those up. I recommend doing a little bit on each side at a time so that you get equal tightening. There's no need to over tighten. So once they're in place, you should be good to go. At this point, it may be helpful to have somebody else helping you out. An extra set of hands is always a good idea. But if you don't have them, it's OK. I'm going to go ahead and put the kickstand down. And the bike should stand on its own. You're going to go ahead and reattach the front brake. And you're going to take the metal housing, slide it through the quick release, and make sure that's in place. So once the brakes are back together, we're going to check to see if the brakes need some adjustment. And it looks like they do. Uh, the left side of the bike and the right side of the bike don't have equal movement. So we need to check that. But before we do that, we also need to adjust our brake pads in case they're touching the tire. In this case, this brake pad is touching the tire a little bit. So we'll use one of our Allen wrenches. In this case, it's the middle size provided. And we'll loosen it up. Just a little bit, enough to get it to move around. You don't have to remove the whole piece of hardware. And then we'll tighten it back in place. And it doesn't have to be crazy tight. It just needs to be snug. And we'll make sure that it gets adjusted properly. All right. So this brake pad is no longer touching the tire. That's good there. And that side's not touching the tire. So now we can go ahead and adjust for the left to right movement. So in this case, you're going to adjust this by using the adjustment screws. If the screw is loose uh, and you can turn it by hand, tighten it until you can't anymore. And then one turn at a time, give that adjustment screw a turn until the left and right sides of the brake move equally. Looks like we have equal movement now. You shouldn't need to adjust the cable housings as it is in place from the factory. But if you do need to, just remember you don't have to remove the entirety of the hardware. You can just loosen it up a little bit and adjust as necessary. While we're here at the front of the bike, we should adjust our handlebars so that they're in the proper place. You notice that these are in the kind of up pointing position, and we're going to rotate those down so that they are more comfortable for the rider. There are two pieces of hardware on the stem that hold this together, and you're going to loosen those. This is going to use the larger Allen wrench provided in the box. We 
can rotate the stem so that it is in the proper place. You want these indication windows on the gear levers uh, to be visible to the rider. And that's usually a good indication of where you want to put it is so that those are visible. Typically somewhere around 30 degrees drop is about what you want. You'll notice that the handlebar has some rise to it as well uh, that you can use as kind of an indicator of where you want these to be. When you tighten the stem cap, you want to make sure that you tighten the top and bottom both equally. If you tighten just the top down, you'll have a much larger gap at the bottom, and that's unsafe because you don't have the proper grip and tension uh, on the stem cap, stem cap that you should. If you get these tightened and you do notice that your gaps on the top and bottom do differentiate too much, just loosen them up and try them again. So I'm just checking these at the same time I'm doing them. Snugging them up a little by little. All right, so now we're gonna check the adjustment on the rear brake. You notice that when we pull the lever, we do have more movement on the left side of the bike than the right side of the bike. So once again, we'll find that adjustment screw and with the Phillips head screwdriver, just give it a turn and sometimes you can adjust the other side in reverse a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for the derailleur, making sure that it can shift through all of the gears in the cassette and uh, can go back and forth without making too much of a racket or skipping gears. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and put the kickstand up and pedal the bike a little bit. And now we're going to go ahead and change gears and see that it changes. Change two gears for us. We're just going to check for alignment to make sure everything's good. We want to make sure that the hanger on the bike, which is this metal part here on the derailleur, is lined up with the cog that we are trying to be in. So in this case, we're looking for seventh gear and it is lined up appropriately. The adjustment knob on the derailleur, turning counterclockwise pushes the derailleur hanger closer to the center of the wheel. Going clockwise pulls it out to the outside of the wheel. There is a front derailleur on this bike as well. There are three different chain rings on the front. If we do need to make any adjustment on the front derailleur, we would make it up here at the handlebars. There is an adjustment cog just like you would see on the rear derailleur back in the back. So you can adjust that if you need to, to move the derailleur guide either out to the outside of the bike or in to the inside of the bike. If you haven't done so already, you can also adjust the handlebars so that they are pointing in the same direction as the front tire. Remember that it is the larger of the two uh, Allen wrenches or three Allen wrenches Make sure that it is good and tight as well. Make sure that the gap on your handlebar stem is equal. At this time, you can check your tire pressure as well. The bike's been on a long journey, lots of shipping involved to get it to you. So make sure that the tire pressure is where it needs to be. It is on the sidewall of the tire if you need to check. Looks like these tires are rated for 40 PSI. So make sure they're, they are properly inflated to that level. If you need to check for any missing parts or broken parts, there is a parts list inside the Huffy Owner's Manual. You can give us a call at our customer service uh, to get those parts or fix anything that's broken, or if you have any other questions to do with assembly of the bike. You can contact us at huffybikes.com contact, or there's a 1-800 number, 1-800-872-2453. All right, so the last thing to do is get out there and enjoy your bike. Make sure that you wear 
any safety equipment that you need, always wear a helmet, obey local laws, and get out there and have some fun. Once again, this is JB from Huffy. Have a good day.